Hello, everyone. I am here to bring greetings to you from Unity Fellowship Church, New York. I am Minister Beatrice, and we are here to be taken back uh, to our spiritual journeys, to our spiritual roots with some wonderful music, with some hymns and some homilies and some hallelujahs after it's all over. You're going to hear some of your favorite, favorite songs, I'm sure. Center of My Joy, which is one of my favorites. We're going to start out with that old, old moving music, blessed assurance. You're going to hear love songs to God. You're going to hear people singing praises and enjoying themselves, giving God worship through music. We hope that you enjoy every song. We hope that it takes you back to the moment that you receive the God as your savior and that you will be inspired uh, by the music that you hear tonight. And don't forget to be inspired by the dedication of the musicians and the singers and the folks that are bringing this experience to you. I hope you enjoy it, Ashe, and so it is. Thank you. 
take me back Take me back, dear Lord To the place where I first received you Take me back Take me back, dear Lord Where I first believed Take me back right here take me back take me back dear lord to the place where i first received you this it, it this song is so consistent to my heart to my journey to my ministry that i am sure in 2022 that i just referenced referenced it a couple of weeks ago when i first heard this song it probably um andre crouch for me wrote a song that speaks to the truth not of ministry i want you to it's the truth of, the truth of spirituality, the truth of deliverance, the truth of the, re, the right relationship we want to have with God. When you dig into the lyrics, um, there's a point in the, in the bridge where he says, renew my strength, restore my joy, and dry my weeping eye. And for me, this song is, a, is, is one of those, well, let's be real, it's one of those uh, by yourself, uh, faithful, ferocious, ugly cries because you have been blessed and have been well and know that you have been in good relationship with God and then something or somebody comes along that makes you feel like you off track that makes you feel like somewhere along the way somewhere in the journey you missed something and it is the sweetest most tender most raw and real declaration of okay God I get it 
This ain't no last week Christian cry. This is, I've been in my faith so long, so strong. I don't cuss the way I used to. I don't get angry the way I used to. I don't get off kilter. I don't sabotage like I used to. And yet something along the way made me miss it. So Lord, take me back. Take me back to where I first received you because I'm going to own and honor that there are times when I go back to that Salvation Sunday, when I go back to coming to the altar, when I go back to, to, to my, my right hand of fellowship, tears in my eyes, and I remember it, Lord, I remember this Sunday. I, I joined the church, I remember this Sunday, I surrendered all. But take me back to the place I first received, like liquor to my mouth, like walking out the door with my stuff, and it was like, get the hell out. But the day that I first realized there was something about you, that word something, Lord have mercy, there was something. I didn't even have a name for it, didn't have a church for it, didn't have a faith for it, didn't have a conversation about it. But there's something that if this Phil small voice said, boy, woman, child of mine, if you, if you know me in a whisper of a way, let's go here. But I, I, I wasn't always good to that friend. They ain't gonna let me stay tonight when I got kicked out. Let's go here. And whatever humble pie you gotta eat, they gonna let you eat it. They gonna serve it on their nice china, but go over there. This song for me just personifies what it means to be able to really surrender all because it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't surrender forward. It takes you backwards to clear out the parts of the story that we sometimes don't like to tell. You know, the, the word that says the half that hasn't been told. You got a show enough version of your testimony. We first given honor to God with the head of my life and you start from here forward and never here. Huh? You go here and no further. I ain't going back there. They don't need to know all of that. Take me back, Lord. Take me back to the place, to the spot where I woke up and don't know how I got up to the spot where I found you, where my head was ringing from the punch, from the spot where I said, I got to get out of here, where I trust you to leave this job right now. Not with two weeks notice, but right now. I will no longer accept another moment. Uh, and then for, 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 for all of that week, you kept and covered and comforted me in ways that looked like somebody bringing me by food that looked like somebody saying, girl, come over here and do, let me do your laundry. Somebody slide $50 in your hand. You go, what's this for? And they just look at you. You know, you tried to be at lunch and cute like you had something to put on the table. Take me back to the place where I first believed you. Because there's a part of the song where he says, um, uh, uh, where she says in the bridge, it's like, I gotta find my way home. I gotta find my home. I gotta find that place, Lord, where when nobody else is around, when you like Yolanda said, alone in a room, it's just me and you. Take me back there. That is what Andre Crouch ministered in this song. And no other song can take me oh, to the place this song does because it reminds me of the day before, the day I always talk about. Anybody? Anybody? Uh, there's some hymn song in there. There's some new salvation from your old memory to go all the way back so you can get all the way up. Amen. Amen. We're the garden where Jesus is waiting. There's a place that is wondrously fair. And it goes with the light of His presence. It's a beautiful garden of
my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Sing that again. Jesus, you are. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. and hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. Lord, you're the fire and light when nights are long and cold in sadness you are the laughter that shatters all my fears and lord when i'm all alone your hand is there to hold jesus you're the center of my joy. All oh, that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment and your hope for all I do. the center of my joy. With the world on sinking sand, you're the rock on which I stand. And Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you every day. You hung on the cross so my soul would not be lost. And Lord, I thank you for paying such a cost. Lord, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. center of my joy. Let's sing that chorus one more time. One more time. Take a second. Think about where you've been. Think about where you're going. Think about what God has done for you. God is good. All the time. All the center of your joy. What does that mean? Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment and your hope for all I do. Jesus, 
You're the center of my joy. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Reverend Wanda Floyd, and I have been given the opportunity to provide a reflection on the song, Lord, I Give You Praise. As I listen to the song, I realize it opens with the phrase, Lord, I give you praise, saying four times. And then it's followed up with, Lord, I bless your name, also four times. And as I reflected on this song, I looked up what an acronym for praise could be. And you have P, which is pleasantly, are rejoicing, A, always, I, N, S, sincere, and E, exhortation. And I want to say that again, pleasantly rejoicing, always, in sincere exhortation. And as I listen to the song, I realize this song does so much more than that, that it continues to exalt God over and over and over and reminds us of God's grace, of God's kindness, of God's blessings and all that God has given to us. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves of that. We have to listen to music to remind us because sometimes we just can't do it for ourselves. And when we can hear someone say, Lord, I give you praise, we realize that life is not as bad as we think it is. That Lord, I give you praise, when it begins to sink into your very soul, you can't help but rejoice. You can't help but exhort. God. You can't help but praise and bless God's name. And in all of that, we can be sincere and praising God for all the things that God has done for us in spite of us sometimes and in spite of me sometimes because God doesn't have to bless us at all. But because we praise God and because we bless God even before we have God's blessings and even before God provides anything for us, God receives that. And when we talk about, Lord, I bless your name, begin your day with love on your heart, expect blessings, share goodness, shine like the sun. And when I thought about the phrase shine like the sun, you know, it, the acronym meant the sun as far as in the sky. But then I realized, you know, it could be like shining like the sun of God. Shining like Jesus in our everyday life, showing our faith through how we talk, how we walk, how we treat other people. We get so caught up in the world around us, especially at this time. There have been killings, there have been shootings, there's so much stuff going on, and we wonder where is God in all of this? And we have to sit back and think and realize that as Christ follows, God is still there crying with us being in pain with us. And we have to realize that the evil that happens in this world is done by the hands of people, not by the hand of God. And so when we can sit back and praise God and bless God and all that is going on, it's the least that we can do. And as Cheryl saying, for me and my house, we will forever praise the name of God and bless the name of God. Thank you for this time to share with you what God has laid on my heart in this reflection on Lord, I give you praise. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to me. Take my moment. And my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move. Happy impulse of thy love. Take my feet and 
let them be swift and beautiful for thee, swift and beautiful. And make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. It shall be thy royal throne.
when I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, and how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He Pick me up, turn me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor. about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory.
and I am the pastor of Unity Fellowship of Charleston, South Carolina. I come today to talk about this song. Um, what this song meant to me when I heard this young man singing and hallelujah, praise the Lord. It took me to Luke 17, 17. I can figurely imagination in my Holy Ghost imagination can imagine when the 10 lepers was healed and that one leper, that, that Samaritan came back and gave Jesus praise. I could hear that man, that Samaritan singing that song and it was beautiful. And when it says, put my feet on solid ground, I can imagine how the leprosy, and it also took me into how many people that Jesus healed and singing that song. And then it took me into a personal testimony because for the last four years, I have gone through the unthinkable and the impossible. And that is my testimony of hearing him sing my praise and, and, and talking about all of my praise, all of my glory, all of it belongs to you. And thinking about that a couple of years ago, I was on some quicksand in some ways, but now praise God, that I am on solid ground and it's powerful. That song is more than a song. It is basically a sermon within itself. It takes one into a praise mode when he's singing it and, and talking about the goodness of the Lord. And it also reminded me of when David was dancing and we don't know the reason that David was singing, but I can see that David was praising God and those lyrics was also coming out his mouth because of all he went through to get to be king and eight years as a future it's running from King Saul and now he is walking in with the art and giving God all of his praise. So the song to me meant so very much. It, it really, it, 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 it resonated in my spirit. I, I listened to it a couple of times and, and I think the most, the words that I keep hearing is, is, you know, putting my feet on solid ground, hallelujah. And I owe God all of it. And I think that is, the pureness of worship. And that song clearly takes me into that area. The other, the other part of the song, which matched so very much, it says it's well in my soul. So this is a personal testimony. And I thought it was beautiful when 
you blended both of those songs together because after the worship of that first song and after all that it did and make you have tears in your eyes and thinking about when you have gone from hell to back, when you have gone through no food in the refrigerator and no house, then to go into it is well in my soul. And it, it bubbled up with me because that was my great, great grandmother's song. And it was also my grandmother's song. And I think most people hear that song is well in my soul as a funeral song. But really, at the end of the day, God gave me it is well is a victory song. It is when you have lost your peace. It's when you have been <clears throat> what I have experienced since 2019. Um, not only as a human being, but also as a pastor and still have that song in my spirit and say, it is well. Now, if my singing bird, my the minister of music would have sung this, sung this, sent this to me about maybe another two years, I could not elate what it is well in my soul because I wasn't there yet. But praise God in 2022, it is well in my soul. And one, we must understand when it's well in your soul, that means that we are allowing the spirit to do what spirit does. It, it allows us to do, because see, when we resist what God is doing, when we resist the will of God, our soul is in turmoil. And what I loved about that song, it says, it is well in my soul. And I just praise God for that song today. And, and I just thank God for this moment to um, speak on what that song means. And it also took me sitting on the porch um, on the plantation with my grandmother and listening to that song on the little radio she had and look over her at her and my grandmother was not a very emotional woman um she was in the shower and clearly she wasn't a runner like me i got that from my mother um and the thing is my grandmother's praise was one tear coming down the eyes and I have remember being in church and sitting on the porch and she hears that. And I can imagine what it meant for her to say it's well in the soul. Um, so I just wanted to say the both of the beautiful songs was very much and it really touched me. And I think that they all combined together. They are the essence of where humanity is where God's kids is and if we can remember that what the first song says is hallelujah I give you all my praise and it and when he was singing it I could just see all of the burdens that he was experiencing everything just came off of him and it allowed us to go into the depths of the soul the song and also in the depths of him. So this is my interpretation of this beautiful, beautiful song. And I am so thankful to help you, my dear minister.
Hey, family. I hope you have been enjoying this Take Me Back Worship and Praise um, experience. It has been a pleasure pulling all the parts and pieces together. And I wanted to pop in for a minute to speak on this next song, When I See Jesus. This song says, I've learned how to live holy and I've learned how to live right. I've learned how to suffer, because if I suffer, I will gain eternal life. How do you find praise in that? Suffering to gain. Our natural thought process would say, listening to these words, that I have to suffer in the learning. I have to bear the weight of pain and heartache and disappointment. This must be the way that God wants me to live holy and be right. But is it? This is what we've heard in many churches by many preachers throughout our lives, if you've lived long enough. Um, but what does it really mean? Does it really mean that I have to be weighed down and burdened down and pressed upon to get the ultimate prize that, that Christians strive for? Or does it mean something else? Well, like many words in the English language, the word suffer has more than one. So the first one is more was what we're more familiar with, is what we think of when we think of this song, that is to, to experience or to be subjected to something bad or unpleasant, something heavy, something weighing us down. Um, but the second one, the older, the, the, I believe the online word was archaic, an old word all by itself, uh, means to tolerate, in other words, to endure. So the song is saying, I've learned how to live holy and I've learned how to live right. I've learned how to endure whatever life throws my way. Because if I endure, then I will gain eternal life. We often use the word suffer, meaning the second definition, but making it sound like the first. I know that sounds confusing, but there's another word that usually follows that. Another word that usually follows the word suffer. And that word is through. And that changes the whole game. <laughs> if I can get through, if I can endure, if I can make it through to the other side, what a glorious thing that is. It's never pleasant when you're going through it. But oh, the joy. When you've made it through, you've learned the lesson, and you've got the victory. So, you know, we've often said that you've suffered through a meeting. I had to suffer through that meeting, them people. Or, you know, you had to suffer through an encounter with somebody you're not exactly fond of. We suffer through. But the fact that we are on the other side of whatever it is means that we've endured it. And not only is it through, but so are we. That's a reason to shout right there. We've all heard the, we've all either heard it or said that the Bible says <laughs> the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but to the one that endures to the end. But what it actually says is, I've seen something else under the sun. The race is not given to the swift or the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned, but time and chance happens to them all. That's Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. What I hear this word say is if you live long enough, 
we will all have to suffer something. But when you add the word through, I hear that you might not be the fastest, the strongest, the smartest, or even have everything that you want. But as you go through, God will provide, God will sustain, God will make a way, God will see you through. So I invite you to listen to this song and hear it anew, not from the standpoint of oppression, but from the vantage point of victory. Because if I suffer, if I hold out, hold on and go through, I will gain eternal life. And when I see Jesus, amen, Ashe, and so it shall be. I learned how to live holy. I learned how to live Yeah. <laughs>